Dr. Phil, Filippo Petrucci for his interesting presentation. And we know we'll, we'll have the pleasure to hear to Mr. Martino Opizzi, yes? Yep. From Université Paris 8, Vincennes, in Saint Denis. Exactement. Martino Opizzi is a PhD student in contemporary history in the Department of Histoire des Pouvoirs, Savoir et Société de l'Université Paris 8, Vincennes, à Saint Denis. With his joint supervision of the University delle Studi di Firenze. His thesis is focalized on the history of Italian Jews of Tunisia, that is the Grana, during the fascist period between 1921 and 1943. Exactly. But before forgetting and before your presentation, I would thank very heartfully the organizer of this important workshop on which is another landmark in the study of North African juries under the suffering of Holocaust under the Nazi fascist and vicious regimes. I, I would name Professor, my friend and colleague, Professor Chaim Sadun. I would thank too Tamar Fuchs, the coordinator of the Center of Documentation and all their staff at the Institute Bensvi, including Mara. She is among us and a really a many, many thanks for you. But the success of the workshop means one thing. We went for the continuation, for the followed workshop. Thank you very much. To Thank you. Martino. Pronto, pronto, 20 pronto. minutes. OK. So I hope uh, to have enough time to present my intervention in 20 minutes. Uh, before this, I want to present my, the outline of my presentation. Uh, first, I will present the Nazi fascist occupation of Tunisia very shortly in 1942-43. Uh, then I will describe the fabrication of the memory among Tunisian and Italian Jews in a uh, comparative perspective. Then I will show the stake of a selective memory among uh, Livornese Jews. And finally, I will conclude with uh, if I have enough time, a short reflection about the importance of memorial sources uh, in uh, the Livornese uh, community. So, very shortly, I, I'd like to uh, present the historical context of Tunisia in World War II because uh, uh, Tunisia experienced several political regimes during the war. So, I, as regard my presentation today, I will focus on the period of uh, Nazi fascist occupation because uh, it's the only one where Italian authorities exercise a direct power and so where uh, uh, they had a direct uh, responsibility. So, we have talked uh, about uh, Libya and uh, Tunisia is under the Italian authority only uh, during uh, six months between November 42 and May 43. So, but before this, I will present, uh, present us, uh, also the social context of uh, Jewish population of uh, Tunisia before and during the war. Traditionally, there were uh, two communities uh, in Tunisia, very different. There was the Tunisian community and the Livornese one. Here, uh, here can we, we can see two photos of the member of uh, the two communities uh, before the war. 
and the statistical differences uh, reflect uh, uh, a bit uh, the distance between the two Jewish, Jewish uh, community. In fact, uh, for example, uh, the Tunisian community was uh, composed by about uh, 60,000 people, according to Paul Sebag uh, estimation, while uh, the Livornese community was composed by much less uh, individuals, about uh, 4,000 people, according to the most recent uh, estimation. And moreover, uh, the presence uh, in Tunisia of uh, Tunisian Jews was very ancient. Uh, they, was, uh, they were installed in Tunisia since the classical age, uh, while the Livornese Jews uh, uh, was, uh, were installed in Tunisia since the 17th century from the Italian port uh, of Livorno for the most part. But maybe the, the most important difference was that uh, uh, while the Tunisian community was involved in a process uh, of modernization only in recent times, Livornese Jews were uh, involved in the same process uh, very early since the modern age, uh, which uh, caused the weakening of the religious ident identity and the parallel de development of uh, a very strong patriotic feeling uh, towards Italy. And this is uh, uh, central to understand uh, the, different, uh, uh, the different fate uh, under the Nazi fascist occupation. So as uh, uh, we, had, uh, we have already mentioned uh, also by the intervention of uh, Mr. Romani, the, well, the, the landing uh, of uh, Allies forces in Algeria uh, caused uh, the Axis uh, troops uh, causes the, the occupation of Tunisia in November 42 by Axis troops. So even uh, though the, the occupation was made by an Italian-German authority, most, most of the real power was uh, in the end of Germans. And so a strong and violent action against uh, Jews uh, was uh, very early established uh, by Walter Rauf, who in uh, December 42 arrests uh, the heads uh, of Jewish community, forcing them to recruit uh, 2,000 Jews uh, to work uh, for the very next morning. Uh, and so the photo I choose uh, for representing this persecution show, shows the Jews of Tunis uh, sent to the forced uh, labor in December 42. And uh, I want to uh, clarify the, the different fate under the occupation between uh, Tunisian Jews uh, and Livornese Jews. Uh, because if Tunisian Jews uh, suffers the consequences of uh, the direct persecution, with, uh, which means uh, deportation in war camps uh, uh, for, uh, for uh, 4,000 Jews, uh, uh, the systematic sacking of uh, Jewish properties, murders, uh, violences, and so, uh, Livornese community suffers a relative moderate uh, oppression because of the quick intervention of the Italian consul Giacomo Silimbani. In fact, after the first arrest of members of the Livornese community involved in persecution as uh, their uh, other uh, uh, Tunisian Jews, mm -hmm. Silimbani personally carried on in order to stop a persecution involving Italian Jews. And then uh, he enforced the Italian government uh, requesting a diplomatic action in order to guarantee the a formal protection for all Italian citizens, including uh, the non-Aryans. So, the success of this political action had a lot of uh, positive consequences for the fate of uh, Italian Jews. For example, Italian Jews uh, were, were exempted for the deportation because the, the organization of their work uh, uh, was ruled by the Italian authorities. So, for example, Italian Jewish, uh, uh, Italian Jews uh, uh, can come back uh, home uh, in the evening, their works are not as humiliating and hard uh, as for the other Jews. Uh, sometimes they work even with the other non-Jews Italian too, so this is not the same uh, uh, humiliation. Moreover, the man in charge of uh, organizing the work is uh, Giorgio Boccara, who is uh, uh, a Livornese Jew too, and uh, one of the collaborators of the consul Slimbani. And even, for example, the, the spoliation uh, are, were, were uh, very rare and accomplished in uh, exceptional circumstances. German soldiers, uh, for example, occupy some, uh, some empty houses of Italian Jews uh, or steal some objects during searches, but uh, not more. And uh, moreover, the Italian troops uh, usually refuse uh, to seize the properties 
of Italian Jews. And finally, Italian Jews can escape the brutality of German troops uh, and uh, the assassination. In fact, uh, while uh, in the Tunisian Jews uh, there were uh, about uh, 50, 56 uh, uh, people killed during the occupation, according to the estimation of uh, Claude Nataf, the Livornese Jewish communities uh, was not uh, affected by murderous actions. So there is a uh, only one death reported, which is that of uh, Ugo Ben Sasson, who killed uh, himself uh, for the shame after his arrest by German army. So, a tragedy, but uh, a, a less uh, hard tragedy uh, of Tunisian Jews. Well, so far we have seen the historical context uh, uh, in the ground line of the occupation, will, which can explain uh, the differences uh, in uh, the immediate perception uh, of the persecution for the two Jewish community, but uh, doesn't fully explain the very different development uh, of the remembrance uh, of the occupation is itself, uh, which has produced uh, two different and separated memories. For, for example, among uh, Tunisian Jews, uh, the occupation was uh, a real traumatic event, uh, event that uh, produced uh, a strong memory during uh, the year after the war. Uh, just to give you an idea, after the liberation of Tunisia, with a lot of publication after the occupation and uh, even during the war, so uh, I, I want to stress this fact that uh, two publication uh, on the occupation uh, suffered by the Tunisian Jews uh, were, were uh, uh, made by the witnesses of the occupation while the war is still. So in 1943, Paul Gates uh, with uh, six, month, six mois sous la botte, and in 1944, the book of Robert Borgel, Etoile jaune et croix gamme. And even then, uh, even then the war, the first historical book uh, focused uh, on the history of Tunisian Jews uh, during the war is published uh, less than 10 years after the end of the war, in 1954, uh, 54, with the book of Jacques Sabille, Les Juifs de Tunisie sous Vichy et l'Occupation. And moreover, the strong memory of the occupation among uh, Tunisian Jews uh, is, uh, showed, is shown by, is showed by uh, a lot of uh, seminars, conferences, and uh, <laughs> celebration. For example, as the consequence of this strong uh, rooted uh, feeling, uh, there is uh, still every year since uh, 2007, the official commemoration of the victims of uh, Nazi persecution against Jews of Tunisia, an event uh, promoted by the uh, Tunisian Jews uh, themselves. So it, uh, it takes place uh, in December 9 in the locals of Shoah Memorial in Paris and it's a very strong remembrance that shows the tragic importance uh, of the occupation in Tunisian Jews' uh, memory. I participated personally every year since uh, 2013, uh, since my presence uh, in Paris, and every time I, I, have a I had a feeling of uh, a very strong will to conserve a memory, especially the last time in uh, 2015, but uh, I have observed also another thing, uh, that uh, even if in Paris there are uh, still a lot of Livornese Jews uh, who lived in uh, Tunisia during the Nazi fascist occupation, I never found uh, one of them uh, or a descendant during these uh, commemorations. It is very strange because it's almost as the message was, uh, this has not been uh, our persecution, this uh, has not been uh, our tragedy, and so this is not our history, and uh, this is not uh, also our memory. In fact, this fact, uh, in my opinion, shows that uh, the Livornese Jews have, co has, uh, have conserved a very different perception of this period. So, for example, this occupation uh, doesn't represent uh, a real traumatic event for the Livornese Jews that I, uh, I have uh, interviewed. So they conserved uh, a very weak memory of this uh, period. In the memory of the war, there are some other uh, uh, period, like the period of Vichy, 
that uh, are uh, very, very uh, traumatic, but not the occupation itself, the, the Italian-German occupation. And so, for example, a difference uh, with the memory among the Tunisian Jews that, uh, that uh, no specific publication uh, are, are written by the victims uh, or by the witnesses in the Livornese uh, Jewish community. And so, uh, concerning uh, the Italian authorities, for example, Livornese Jews are progressively built a comforting memory based uh, on the idea of uh, a, human, a humanitarian protection by the consul and by the Italian army. So the centrality of uh, Italian authorities in the protection of Livornese Jews uh, uh, is uh, very, very present in the memories uh, of uh, uh, Livornese Jews. And then uh, another thing I've uh, observed that is that que, uh, pardon. <laughs> is that uh, uh, according uh, with the, this uh, hegemonic narration, all the Nazis uh, are involved in extermination programs against Jews, while Italian fascists uh, are not uh, concerned. And so this appears in uh, a lot of written memory of the period, like uh, the, the, the book uh, mentioned by, by, by my by, I'm sorry, uh, by Petrucci, I'm sorry, I'm, huh? okay. So for example, the, the book of Bruno Lumbroso, Histoire de la Familia Lumbroso, uh, the book of, uh, the other books uh, from uh, Giacomo Nunez or Elia Boccara, uh, doesn't, uh, uh, doesn't uh, accuse the, directly the Italian authorities. And this appears, this appears uh, also in oral memories, uh, and I give you some examples. For example, uh, Giacomo Nunez, born in uh, 1928, uh, I quote, uh, when Germans arrived, uh, he said, they immediately targeted the Livornese Jews, but Silimbani was pro-Livornese, and he even intervened to release Livornese at the time of the Nazis. Another uh, uh, witness uh, of this event, uh, uh, Bruno Lumbroso remembered that Germans uh, took his brother Marco in December 42 to send him uh, to the labor camp in the southern Tunisia with the other Italian Jews, but uh, thankful to Silimbani, they were liberated. So he said, uh, I quote, we have later learned that the fascist consular authorities intervened in favor of Italian Jews. The consulate unofficially let us know that nothing will be done against us. So in the memory, there is uh, this uh, very strong presence uh, of the Italian authorities like uh, a very uh, important protection against uh, Germans. So another thing I have uh, observed that, that this remembrance uh, of the occupation uh, caused uh, a selective memory, a memory that uh, cut off uh, all negative judgment on the Italian authorities in Tunisia during the occupation. And so it's important, in my opinion, because even uh, after the war, when uh, a lot of uh, studies uh, show that uh, the Italian authorities was not so good uh, as uh, remembered, like, for example, in the, in the works of Daniel Carpi, Roman Rainero, and uh, Filippo Petrucci, the memory the, the gap between the memory and the history is uh, is been uh, is uh, is too much uh, stronger. The, I, I mean, the time instead to bridge uh, the, the divergence between memory and history confirmed and reinforced uh, this break. So, for example, about. Uh, the problem of a specific persecution of the Italian Jews by Italian authorities, the memory said that the consul never took action against Italian Jews, and that this judgment is even retroacted to the years before the occupation and even before the war. So the, the judgment is that Consul Silimbani never persecute Italian Jews, even after the Russian laws uh, in uh, 1938. 
and uh, moreover, about, for example, the motivation of the protection of Italian Jews during uh, occupation, the memory of Livornese, uh, the most part of Livornese uh, witness, say that uh, the role of Consul Silimbani was uh, moved by his uh, humanism, even if uh, several studies have demonstrated that the protection of Italian Jews of Tunisia by Italian authorities was based only on a political logic, very cynical also. And finally, the great question about uh, a long-term project of Italy for Jews of Tunisia and about the existence of uh, a specific persecution plan of Italy against the Jews of Tunisia had risen the gap between uh, memory and history. In fact, according to the memory of Italian Jews of Tunisia, only Germans were involved in this extermination plan. But however, some secret documents in the fa of the fascist diplomacy shows us uh, the existence of a parallel persecution plan elaborated by Italian fascists. And so here we have uh, the real paradox. And uh, I want uh, to stress this point that uh, the version of the persecutors and the victims uh, agreed on excusing the fascist action against uh, Italian Jews of Tunisia. And this exp explains uh, why the title of my presentations uh, called The Memory of the Livornese Jews uh, an Insidious Resource. Because uh, the memory of Livornese victims uh, of persecutions reinforced the persecutor version instead of denying it. And so it, it's very, very strange, uh, this uh, phenomenon. But in fact, uh, as we will see in the next uh, slide, if I have uh, enough time, I have enough time? Five minutes. Five minutes, wow. The reality is more complex uh, and less uh, soft uh, with the Italian authorities. So for example, I try to, to be very, very quick. The, instead of uh, an uh, absence of uh, anti-Semitism by the uh, Italian authorities, I, I observed that, that uh, Italian consul Silimbani apply an elastic anti-Semitism. So for example, during the first period between uh, the Russian laws uh, in Italy and the beginning of war, the beginning of war, Italian consul Silimbani tries to apply anti-Semitic laws to the Italian community. So there is a, a real uh, project of persecution, an action of persecution against Italian Jews. But then uh, with the war and with the, uh, per the parallel persecution of Italian Jews by Vichy government, Italian authorities uh, choose to suspend persecution against Italian Jews, but not for humanitar humanitarianism, but uh, in order to protect the Italian interest in Tunisia. The priority is to defend the position of Italy in Tunisia in the perspective in, of a, victor, a victory of the Axis forces. And then the same logic is applied uh, during uh, uh, the direct occupation of Tunisia by Italian and German troops. Italian authorities prevent Nazi persecution of Italian Jews, but only in order to demonstrate the right of fascist Italy in the country, in Tunisia. And even in this case, uh, the fascist propaganda in Tunisia, for example, conserves several anti-Semitic contents. Uh, for example, I observed that uh, the Italian newspaper L'Unione, which was under the direct, direct uh, responsibility of Silimbani, uh, shows uh, a strong anti-Semitic propaganda against Jews. And uh, moreover, the Italian army, for example, shows a total indifference facing the violent uh, mobilization of Jewish population during December 92. So, as we have seen, the protection has nothing to do with uh, sentimentalism of Italian consul. And uh, moreover, even maybe the, 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 the worst thing of this uh, uh, this persecution that uh, that uh, uh, it also Italian Italy had planned a, per a persecution against uh, uh, Jewish communities, included the Livornese one. For, so, for example, uh, it existed a, a plan for the future of Tunisia, made by the Minister of Italian Africa. Uh, and written in the first half of uh, 1943, uh, it's uh, one of the most uh, interesting documents I found in the diplomatical uh, Italian archive, because uh, 
is concerning the Jewish population of Tunisia. So it's, it's the plan uh, in, uh, of, the, of the Italy in the event of victory of Axis forces. It's a plan uh, which included racial measures against all Jews, including the Italian ones. So for example, I quote, uh, for uh, concerning the non-Italian Jews, uh, these documents say that uh, supporters, uh, these are the, the, the Tunis Tunisian Jews are supporters of each kind of subver subversion, greedy speculators, anti-fascist diards. They are people to take off uh, from Tunisia. Uh, take off, uh, the, the real verb in Italian was uh, allontanare. The on, on the real meaning of this expression uh, that may be or expulsion or extermination or both, probably. And uh, concerning the Italian Jews, uh, there is also a plan uh, not uh, of expulsion, but uh, absolutely of submission. So the Livornese Jews uh, are considered like uh, uh, Jews in Italy, so uh, subjected uh, uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, with a tolerant application, but uh, that places the Italian Jews in a state of uh, total subordination to the Aryan population uh, of uh, the future Tunisia. So, as we have seen, uh, the memory of the occupation among the Livornese Jews uh, has been very subjective and uh, with a lot of distortion. So the final question is, uh, if I have enough time, just uh, two minutes, which are the reasons of, these, uh, of the several oblivions on the narration of Nazi fascist occupation of Tunisia in uh, Livornese memories? And uh, the main reasons is that uh, during the Second World War, the Italian Jewish community was involved uh, in another traumatic event, event perceived as even worse than the Nazi fascist occupation. And this, this event was the deportation by French authorities uh, in 1940 and 1943. So a, per a persecution uh, based on, uh, on, uh, on the, not uh, on religion, but uh, on the citizenship. So the Livornese Jews uh, was persecuted as uh, Italian citizens. And so, hmm? conclusion. conclusion, conclusion, with the second reason that I want to, to, to stress, that the Italian protection was felt like a compensation against the shame of racial laws in 1948, uh, a shock for the patriotic feeling of the Jewish uh, Italian community. Uh, the, 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 I think that uh, if Italy protected Italian Jews during, during the occupation, it means that uh, somehow Italian Jews are relevant for the Italian politics. And moreover, to the point of view of Italian Jews of Tunisia, the consular protection confirmed uh, their vision of themselves as an elite of the in, in uh, the Italian community, which couldn't be persecuted by the Italian consul. And uh, so this is uh, the reasons of uh, the the creation of this uh, very particular uh, memory. So I have uh, also to spend, I have not uh, enough time to, uh, to, to talk about uh, the, the importance uh, of, and uh, not only the limits uh, of the memory, but uh, I have not enough time, so. The I next workshop. The next workshop, <laughs> yeah, okay. I try. So thanks for your attention and uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for this interesting lecture and presentation. And uh, now to your comments and discussion. Yeah, the microphone. Yes. To open. I ask you to be patient, and uh, I want to speak in French because it's uh, too much uh, difficult to me. <laughs> For me too. To, uh, 
to comment uh, your uh, speech, uh, especially the speech on Tunisia. Um, uh, je voulais dire que les pays, les quant aux, um, ah, alors euh, les juifs des pays européens étaient euh, divisés par la diplomatie euh, allemande en quatre euh, euh, en quatre groupes très précis et la diplomatie allemande était très très précise euh, sur comme, comment se euh, traiter ces juifs. Alors, euh, il y avait les pays neutres, euh, comme la Suisse, le Portugal euh, et l'Espagne. Euh, quand on euh, rencontrait dans un pays euh, envahi euh, un juif euh, espagnol ou portugais ou suisse, euh, il y avait un certain traitement. Euh, qui était au commencement de arrêter et puis relâcher pour pendant plusieurs mois. Et puis la, la seconde, euh, la seconde euh, euh, décision était de les envoyer à Bergen-Belsen. Puis il y avait euh, les sujets des pays alliés de l'Allemagne, la et ça c'est le cas. Euh, alors, nous avions les Italiens, les Hongrois, et quand Italiens et Hongrois étaient, euh, quand les, les, les Allemands rencontraient les Allemands ou les Italiens, euh, absolument, ils ne touchaient absolument pas. Euh, donc, euh, la question de la protection italienne est une question de diplomatie internationale et n'a rien à voir ni avec euh, l'humanitarisme. Euh, ni avec, euh, euh, je pense, autre question. Parce que de toute façon, les gens qui, étaient, euh, à, qui appartenaient à ces, euh, à ces pays étaient repatriés. Euh, donc, euh, je pense qu'il n'y a ici euh, aucune question de, euh, de, euh, de, 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 ne, de aucune relation entre histoire et mémoire, parce que Justement, les Juifs italiens n'ont pas été touchés jusqu'à septembre 1943. OK. Another question or comment? Eh, to Chaim. Thank you all for the presentation. I want to try to uh, emphasize one thing that is important for the German occupation of Tunisia and then to give, uh, try to give some uh, new dim dimension to see what was those uh, testimonies or those uh, 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 memories from Tunisia in a much more wider uh, perspective. Regarding uh, the Tunisian case during the German occupations, we know that the sufferers of the population, all the populations, Arab, um, French, uh, Jews, including the Ghana, was more from the bombardment of Tunisia than from the Nazi occupation. Because it was much more frightening to know, to see when uh, uh, those bombardments are coming to, uh, uh, to uh, are coming to Tunisia. And we know that Tunisia was bombarded much of the time, much of those six months, and there was no differ differ differentiations between Ghana, Twansa, or Arabs and uh, uh, Muslims. Uh, the second point is that there is about 100 uh, romans and, and memories that were written by Tunisian Jews in French after the in, in France and in French after the uh, immigration of most of the Tunisian Jewry to France after 1956 uh, and, and other. And when you see those romans and you're trying to see what was the the the, the place that took part the war in those uh, 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 romans uh, is much more, uh, 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 it's not um, uh, important as the uh, immigrations and what the French called the deracinement, the chirure uh, from Tunisia uh, took place. That means that when you are talking about uh, those testimonies, those romans, those uh, uh, memories, 
when it, you see it at the long duree, at, 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 at the long perspective, they are changing their focuses. La Deshirur, it's much more important than the Nazi occupation of Tunisia. It seems to be like a, 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 an, a, an event that occurred very, uh, very uh, in, in so, some months and, and more than uh, this. So it's very interesting to see even what, for example, the Grana thought about this uh, uh, cinema from uh, Tunisia. Okay, yes. I would like to open another window, and it's very difficult for me to uh, explain it in English. I'll try. The testimonies concern the past, but the testimonies look to the present and to the future, not to the past. So they are written or they are told, uh, thinking about what I am I am today and what I, I want to be to, tomorrow. First step. Second step, or second premise, uh, Italian nationalism, it is very particular because it is, at the same time, it, it is very strong and it proclaims to be a very low level. But the two characters are um, uh, strictly confused in intrecciati, interrelati. So for the Italians, Italian people, Italian of today, and even the grana of today and of the yesterday, generally speaking, I'm making a, uh, it is worthy to hold, to hold and to protect Italian citizenship more than this happened to other uh, people in Europe, to other nationality. And this helped to explain why those Jews from, Legon, uh, from Tunis, Legon, uh, of the Legon community, are so protective with the consul. It's quite the same thing that happens with the Jews from Salonika. Okay, uh, I myself, uh, I, I would wish to have brief questions to the three lectures to Professor Magnazi. What was the role, if there was a role, of Israeli emissaries after 45 in Libya? in increasing the panic among the Jews of Libya and hurrying their evacuation of Libya. I, uh, I insist, if there was a, a, a role, because uh, in other, uh, if for Iraq, uh, for example, uh, Israelis were accused to have in increasing, to have in incre in increased, increased the panic among the Jews of Iraq for their, uh, for hurrying their departure. To Filippo, what is the importance for you of your testimonies you, uh, you made, or you, you hear, or you read? What is uh, the importance for your historical study. And for you, Martino, in what sense your resource was insidious? Why insidious? Uh, it's insidious because, uh, paradoxically, reinforce uh, the persecutor's uh, version of the event. Of the event. Mm -hmm. So, uh, like uh, after the war, uh, Consul Selimbani presents himself uh, as the protector, as a real protector of uh, all Italians, even the Jews. Uh, Livornese Jews who lived in uh, Tunisia, but even uh, in France or in Italy after the war, uh, reinforce this, uh, this version. That is a version uh, that is uh, completely wrong, wrong because there was uh, a plan uh, of uh, expulsion, persecution, and submission uh, created by Italy, by Italy, Italian diplomacy, 
uh, concerning Tunisia and the Jewish community. If you have answer for the other question, which uh, but I, I heard okay. about uh, a lot of uh, observation, but not uh, directly. <laughs> You have Question. a memory of the war, but not of the present. Uh, yes, Philippe. Okay. <coughs> and thank you. And thank we have the answers for other questions. <laughs> okay. I, I don't have other uh, answers. Okay. Uh, thank you to my uh, Professor Chetrit for for your work for the question, which is the important for me. I I I didn't I didn't use almost nothing of that I collected. Okay. I use a little bit, I try to use uh, testimonies, take this for uh, in uh, Yad Vashem. Uh, I think that with these testimonies, I can try, I can try to work in myself to understand a little bit better the situation of this period. Because, as I told before, also using just archives, you can give a completely different work, in, in, if you are not uh, honest, if you have an idea, a strong idea, you can just work that all the situation in the Arab lands was horrible, or all the situation in the Arab land was a dream. So you can do the, the same error if you use oral testimonies, or if you use archives documents. So I try, I, I want to use, but I, I know because the situation of oral testimonies is still strong, so I want to be careful before use this. I want to try to use, but I, want, I think that uh, the oral testimonies can help to understand a little bit better the situation at the time. At least I try to do. Okay. Yes, uh, it is uh, an important question because we have to go more deeply about the, the question of 45. The question is not to increase the panic. Panic was reality. After 45, the conditions, the condition of the Jews of Libya means uh, have uh, a, a where uh, a change completely in the vision of the future and in the vision also of the past. What the Zionist organization made was to improve the capacity of the Jewish community to defend itself. In the program of 48, as I know by the collections of information and uh, witness by Lilo Arbib and other people, who lived in that time, uh, the Jews were aware about the pogrom and capable to defend themselves. In the hospitals, you, you could find many Arabs killed. Yeah. How it happened in three years to organize self-defense, yeah, Haganah. Yeah, yeah. So people came from Israel, the name is Tzio, is used in Italy in the language of the, <laughs> also of the little war between groups and other things. And he worked bombs, they have had bombs also, army, a group of women and men, young, young fame and young boys. They were prepared for that for three years. But what it happened in the self-representation of uh, the Arabs national movement directed by the kingdom, the future king, uh, Senussi. Also for Senussi, the history of the Jews of Libya was something of the past. All the relationship between the two communities were to organize how to organize the transfer, how to organize the exodus, and to permit, to give the opportunity for the Libyans to work because all the activity, manual activity, I don't say about the, the Greek uh, merchants and other things, I speak about the quotient activity. 
the Jews were obliged to teach the Arabs how to work. They gave their activity. They not just gave their activity, but they were obliged to teach. And that was uh, a decision directed by the British, the Jewish community, and the Arabs represented. It is something really uh, difficult to understand. They, don't, they were rabid. They left their activity, and they were obliged to teach also how to make something. All the artis uh, artisans were Jews in Libya, uh, but not just in Libya, also in North Africa. And it was a tradition. All the activity, manual activity, was uh, uh, influenced by the Jewish tradition. So the artisans were Jews, and so the artisans were obliged to teach. And when I was child, I, I knew that the activity of Sokol Moshir and other places were, were Jewish activities. Were Jewish activities in years 20, in years 30, in years 40. So I don't think that in Libya the question was how, of, of course, the agenda of the Jewish state after 44 was to have a Jewish immigration because 600 thousand people were in the Jewish state in 48. And so the question after the destruction of the Jewish organization in Poland, in Russia, in all the other space of East Europe, where the Zionist movement grow in years 20, in years 30, was completely collapsed, destroyed. They were obliged to find people for immigration. So we have other problems, and you talk about that, and also Romani spoke yesterday. But the question was how to have immigrants, immigrants for the, from the East. 400,000 people came from the camps, the refugees in Europe, and about six, seven hundred thousand came from Morocco, from Baghdad. It was something connected also with the policy of the new state. But it is important to understand that in Libya, the question was not to create panic. The panic was reality. Collapsed completely every aspect of relationship between the two communities after 45, completely. And it is something that you can find in the songs. محلا السفرة بعد العيد أمتى لبحر يتشنى ما تقعدش في الحارة الدور أم يا يودي ما تقعدش في الحارة الدور جاك البابو مج... my sister is here she songs all these songs she know she know very well all these songs she is here and she walked and uh, also wrote uh, the, the songs and for, for different CD but it is important not to make confusion with the with the Iraq and Egypt after 53 and 55 and 54. In, in Libya, the role, the activity of the uh, uh, Jewish emissary from, from, from Israel was to involve the Jewish community to organize self-defense. And the chief rabbi of the uh, British army told them after 45 in his speech, said, they have to learn Shema Israel. Mm. Don't say Shema Israel. Create a situation in, in which the other were obliged to say Shema Israel. Mm. So it was a very important message to self-defense. And the image of the Israel soldiers, the future Israel soldiers, in Libya was an important message. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think a double message, not just for the Jews, also perhaps for the Arab nationalistic movement. And uh, it was a very dark time, very hard time. And today, what it is important for us not to use memory to manipulate history and to manipulate the possibility of a different future in this area of the world. 
It takes time, but we have to conserve in ourselves vision of a different future of peace, of cooperation, and also tikkun olam, interior olam, not just the external olam, our, our self-perception. When uh, in, I connected Tel Aviv, Rome, and Israel, and Tripoli, I understood that I became little free. Beyond Tikkun Olam, it is necessary Tikkun Goral. Okay, okay, Golakavod Lecha. Correcting the fate, not only the world. Yeah, thank you very much for your presence and uh, to the next session. <laughs>